welcome to the Inject Creativity Live Show. My name is Rob the Robot from the Adobe Education Team. This is a free online show for primary, secondary and post-secondary educators interested in enhancing digital literacy, communication and creativity in the teaching and learning process. Here are your hosts, Dr. Tim Kitchen and Erin Raithkin. Oh, there we go. We're in there. And obviously some teething issues because it's been a while since we've come <laughs> together. We've got the A-team back, which is great. So thank you, Rob. Welcome to the Inject Creativity Live show, a show based on encouraging digital creativity in all curriculum areas and levels with the help of Adobe tools. Welcome, Erin. Thanks, Jim, and a special welcome to everyone who's joined us live and those watching on demand via the Adobe for Education YouTube channel or the Australasian Adobe for Education Facebook group for this, the 70th episode of Inject Creativity Live being recorded in July 2022. Oh, 70 episodes, Erin. Can you believe mm. For those of you who are with us live, we do encourage you to say hi in the chat. Share where you are from and add some comments and uh, do so throughout the show. That'd be great. Now let's start this episode properly with an acknowledgement of country. We respect and honour all Indigenous people from the lands we reach out to during this event. We acknowledge their stories, traditions and living cultures. We acknowledge them as the first educators and the first creatives. And we commit to building a brighter future together. I'm coming to you from Wurundjeri land in the Kulin Nation, otherwise known as Melbourne, Victoria, Australia. And I'm coming to you from the country of the Jagara, Yagara and Agurapur people from around the area, otherwise known as Brisbane, Queensland, Australia. Let's welcome our techie whiz and Adobe Senior Customer Success Manager, Jerry Wong, to the stage. Hi, Jerry. Hi, everyone. I'm coming to you from the home of the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, otherwise known as Sydney, New South Wales. During this episode, we will be hearing from Adobe Education Leader, Associate Professor, Max Schleser from Swinburne University. Tim's going to demo one of the great Adobe Express quick actions. And we'll be promoting both the International Adobe Education Summit in July and the APAC Adobe Education Summit in September. We'll also be sharing a number of Adobe related education resources and professional learning opportunities for you to take back to your schools, universities and other places of learning. We do hope you enjoy this episode. And if you do, please share it with your colleagues and wider education networks via the Adobe for Education YouTube channel. You're watching Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raithke. Now let's meet our special guest for this episode and welcome back to the show, Adobe Education Leader, Associate Professor Max Slisher. Big round of applause for Max. Hi, Max. How are you? Hey, thank you very well. Now, Max, I believe this is the first time we've had you on the show since you became an associate professor. Is that right? Yep. yep. <laughs> Congratulations, Max. Thank Big you. achievement. And uh, of course, the next time you come on, you'll probably be a fully fledged professor. You give, give it some time, but you know, we're, we're, work, we're working on it, of course. Uh, just going to bring Jerry back up. I think Jerry's got a question for you, Max. Where are you, Jerry? There you are. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Max. Tell us about the book you recently published. Smartphone Filmmaking, Theory and Practice. Um, and it's something that I've been really excited about for the last years, like really the last 10 years. And I look into what's happening in the world of smartphone filmmaking. It's happening in the industry, what is happening at the amazing smartphone film festivals, who are the creatives and the filmmakers behind this, but also what is this new digital smartphone filmmaking ecology. So how smartphone filmmaking is a contribution to storytelling and the creative industries more broadly. Um, my students, they really like the pictures in there as well, you know, so um, it was really important for me to show some of the great work by all my colleagues, which are fantastic smartphone filmmakers. That's great, Max. You are a world leader in that whole area, and it's great that you've got a, a book now published. If you want to find that book, just look up the topic again. We'll bring that back up again, Jerry, just to remind people. It's Smartphone Filmmaking with Max Slisher, Theory and Practice with Max Slisher, and then um, you should be able to find a place to download. Is there a place you'd recommend, Max, to purchase that book? Um, the, I mean, uh, the publisher, Bloomsbury, is really great. They've got like an, uh, an online store, but you can also like, you know, get it at your trusted bookstore. So I've recently seen it in a few places in Melbourne as well. So, um, you know, 
it's always nice to get a hard nice copy. <laughs> it's it's very nice. It's been lots yeah. of work, but it's also like um you know uh, yeah it's very rewarding. And um I mean, of course, if you like an e version, um but it's also great to get it for your library so that you can like you know um you know get students excited about the book. Um but yeah, it's you know like the the online stores or your bookshop, you know it's it's in quite a few places, which is nice to see. Great, Max. Tell us what you'll be sharing in this episode. Today, I'll be talking a little bit about um, immersive media, and in particular, what I do in with my students in experimental screen production, and also to talk very briefly about two cinematic VR projects that I've been doing over the last years. Thanks, Max. So we are looking forward to hearing all about that very soon. Now it's time for a quick inject creativity live Adobe Express tip. All right, I'm going to share my screen, which for some reason disappeared on me. So I'm going to bring it back up again to get this tip done. And what you can see straight away is my site, timkitchen.net. And the most recent article is what we got up to today. We're finally back with a big day in event back in Melbourne again, face to face with about 300 students. And for many of them, I was introducing Adobe Express to them and they were fascinated. And it was great to be able to interact with them and, and share them. So there's an article there about the uh, uh, what we did at the Big Day In event at the University of Melbourne today uh, with those Melbourne students. So feel free to have a look at timkitchen.net for that most recent article. Let's jump into Adobe Express. Now, I've already logged in, Erin. Mm -hmm. so let's just assume that's already happened. And of course, the quick actions, as you're probably already aware, are right there on the dashboard and you can access them straight away. Otherwise, if you prefer, you can click on the little plus symbol at the top of the little add button at the top left hand corner. When you click on that, you can see all the quick actions. And the quick action we're going to be referring to today is this one here called trim video. So as I click on trim video, I happen to have that stinger that you just saw that introduced this segment of the show. And I've got mm -hmm. that as an MP4, there it is there. So I'm gonna grab that stinger and I'm gonna click and drag it into this section here where you drag it. Now I'm not gonna do anything else other than watch it there, click the play button, you should be able to hear it back. Now it's time for a quick Inject Creativity Live Adobe Express tip. And if I just want Rob to say Adobe Express tip rather than the whole stinger, I'm gonna to go to the edge here, this little handle on the edge and just drag it. I'm going to try and work out exactly where I want that to be. So I'm going to Live Adobe Express. So I'm going to find that little white button and then just drag it to the, and make it stop at the point where I'm Live Adobe. Just around about here, I think. Yeah, yeah. just before the robot on the timeline by the looks of it. Now, there. Grab the handle and trim it to that point here. Let's have a play. Adobe Express tip. Yay. So now that I've done that, all I need to do is click download and it starts the process of just downloading that little section that you want. So it's a really quick action rather than going into Premiere Rush or into Premiere Pro and doing it that way. It's wonderful that you can do these quick actions within Adobe Express. What do you think of that, Erin? It's great. And I really love the fact that um, if you're in a environment where you're some people on PC, some people on Mac, the controls are exactly the same. So you're not having to try to go, oh, what app do you have on your computer? What kind of computer do you have to, so you don't have to second guess yourself to do something nice, quick and cleanly with your students or colleagues. And here it is here in my downloads folder. If I open that up in my media player quick time, it's just opened up on a different screen. So I'll bring it over here, hit play. Adobe Express tip. There we go, it's done. I now have edited that video without it having to open up a full video editing package, which is rather exciting. So thanks for watching that Adobe Express demo, that quick tip, and we'll have another one in the next episode. We hope you're enjoying this episode of Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raifke. The EduTech Australia Conference is back as a face-to-face -face event on August 10 and 11, but this time it's in my home city, of Melbourne. Being held at the Melbourne Convention and Exhibition Centre, over 10,000 educators and IT support people will be at what is the largest trade show and conference with the entire education life cycle across Australia. 
Adobe is a gold sponsor this year. We'll be presenting a plenary session as well as a workshop with the support of Victorian Adobe education leaders, Michelle Dennis and Stephen Colbert. If you are going to Edutech in Melbourne, do register for the two Adobe sessions and visit the Adobe team and Adobe education leaders at the Adobe booth at the Expo. Clara here from the Adobe education team. I lead our global education community programs, and I'm excited to see you at the APAC Adobe Education Summit. Thank you, Clara, for promoting the APAC Summit. The 2022 APAC Adobe Education Summit is happening on Wednesday, the 28th of September. So if you haven't done so already, please do register via adobe.ly forward slash APAC dash edu dash summit 22. I'll get you to keep reading there, Erin. It's going to be a great event, so please do join us. Hi, Ben Forter here, and I'm looking forward to seeing you at the APAC Adobe Education Summit. You may have heard that the Global Adobe Education Summit is happening on July 26 to 28. That's the USA dates. July 26, which will be the 27th for us, is the Digital Media Pre-Conference. July 27, which will be July 28 for most of us, is the main conference day for all educators and IT administrators. Find out more and register for the recordings via tinyurl.com forward slash int dash summit 22. Hi, I'm Tacey Trowbridge, head of Adobe's thought leadership and advocacy. Thanks for watching Inject Creativity Live. If you're excited about creativity, take a listen to the Creative Educator Podcast. You may have noticed a number of new lightning learning courses and other resources that are now featured on the Adobe for Education YouTube channel and the Adobe Education Exchange. The most recent update to the Adobe for Education YouTube channel is the new writing activities with Adobe Express. Here is Adobe Evangelist Dom Trainer from London to share more. Have you ever heard a student say that they have writer's block? Research shows that whether you use a graphic organizer or a structured writing prompt with students, you can help unstick writer's block and empower students to generate and simplify their ideas when getting ready to write a story, a report, or a presentation. The best writing activities are quick, creative, and catchy, and they help students organize their thoughts and ideas to support deeper learning. Okay, let's get creating. We hope you're enjoying this episode of Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raifke. It's always a pleasure to have Associate Professor Max Leisure, although the last time he was on the show, he wasn't Associate Professor. He was just simply a doctor. <laughs> so it's great to have you with us on the show. Max, he's going to be presenting the topic Immersive Media with Adobe Creative Cloud. Over to you now, Max. Um, thanks, Steve, for this really great introduction. It's like, um, you know, really fun to be back here. And yeah, so um, you can find me on Twitter as Max Mobile. I'm also joining you from the land of the Rundry people of the Kuli Nation. And yeah, I'm an Adobe Education Leader. Of course, I'm at Finburn, which is um, one of the first Adobe Creative Campus in Australia, so that's always a good match. And I want to talk to you a bit about um, immersive media and also really thinking about how we can experiment with immersive media. And lots of new tech is out there, but then, of course, Premiere Pro and Photoshop and After Effects, they can work with immersive media. So that's something that I got really excited about. And so, as I mentioned the book before, you get a, you know, it's a mini snapshot here. I explored a little bit, or I looked into this book a bit about mobile cinematic VR, so that, you know, even if you don't have a, you know, a, a massive camera, there's still some really great work that you can do, and it's all about experimenting, because it's such a new way of storytelling, or rather story living, that we sort of need to think about what are all these different forms and formats, and how we're creating these experiences. It's um, really exciting to work with students in that space as well, because suddenly there is no more framing, and the editing works in very different ways, so there's different rhythm and pacing, and so, of course, I asked my students to make 360 films. And so I thought, I have to do the same thing. So, and yeah, um, as you can see in the, in the picture there, that's the camera that I used. That's the same that the students use. It's just, you know, a very small compact camera. 
As soon as we are lucky, we also have like um, two of the big Insta360 Pro cameras, but after I was traveling, I just wanted to have something really small with me. And then, of course, we work with um, Premiere Pro to you know, do all the editing, and that, that works really well. So if you have a 360 video, you need to get it out and about. You can think about working with or uh, using a you know sort of a, a meta quest or an htc or an oculus rift but even if you get like a google cardboard i think that's fine too i mean it's just 15 dollars you get a vr experience not everyone likes it but i think it's a way to get out um i've worked with my technicians at swinburne as well to set up an htc vive or you could also if you get an oculus rift to plug it into premiere pro so that when you're editing a 360 video you don't have to sort of export it and test it but you can in the VR headset, explore the 360 video. So that's like my sort of preferred way of working. And so, yeah, um, I made one cinematic VR project which is called Steel City. And I thought about sculptures because when you stand in front of a sculpture, you can really see the dimension and the scale. And of course, with a 360 video, you can do that in a similar way. And it's about imaginative storytelling as well to really create some audiovisual experiences. I'm a big fan of Kaleidoscope, so I sort of Use Premiere Pro to create these kaleidoscope effects. And the other project, which was called uh, New Dawn, that I filmed, uh, uh, happened to be my hometown, um, in an old factory in Germany, in the Ruhr area. So it's a very cinematic location in a way. And um, yeah, it was also lucky as a snowing for one day. So I got to, to produce a project. And then over the last years, I, I edited it. And it's now been at a few festivals, which I'm also pretty stoked about at the moment at the Melbourne Documentary Film Festival. And in 360 filmmaking, it's really about this sort of idea that we don't have like the beginning, middle, end as a story has, but it's more of story living. So it's sort of the idea of ideation, exploration, and making sense. And very much these same things I do with my students. And so I've got one unit that um, I work with some colleagues. It's called Experimental Screen Production. And for the second assignment, we ask students to produce just across the road from here at Swinburne and the town hall. There's a performance space. We create an exhibition. And that is like, of course, some pictures pre um, COVID. It's, um, and we hope that we can, like, be, you know, not only in the classroom, but also for the end of term, um, have an exhibition in the town hall gallery. And the work from the students is just really amazing. Um, to see what we create, the uh, installations, multi-screen work. Um, we bring lots of projectors from the university across the road and set them up on the exhibition space, but students also do some really amazing work. So when they do sort of multi-screen, some students found all the laptops that they could find and really think about how, yeah, and sort of, you know, more arts approach to experimental screen production works. And as part of the exhibition, students also have the option to work with cinematic VR. And so there's some links in there. Um, if you want to see the, the, the films, they're like, of course, online, or just you know, feel free to find me on Twitter or via email, and I can also share them with you. And so the, the pitch to the students was really that we also want to think about the exhibition experience of this immersive media project. And so this film, Under the Wood, you get to see, but you have to sit in this coffin that the student built. And so that's part of the film experience. And the students did very well. They also introduced the film by having some of the props, some of the, that, that wardrobe, that costume. So they give you an idea what the project is about. They give you an introduction. They hand you the VR headset and you experience the, the project. And so, of course, you can't move because you're in that coffin. And so the story is about, you know, I um, don't want to spoil everything, no, but like something that you engage with while you are in that environment. Uh, it's a similar idea that some projects had in the film, which was called um, uh, Recurrence. And, it's sort of the idea of like a Blair Witch type project um, where something is happening outside your tent and you're in the tent. And so, of course, in the exhibition experience, you sit in this tent. And that means when you sort of move around, you can feel the tent, you sit on the floor. So it's very much the trick that what you see in the world is what you're engaging with. Um, and that's also how we do the assessment. So this is here my colleague Hannah who is um, you know, accessing the work in the gallery, so out of the classroom, which I think is always great, that it really mirrors what an exhibition setup is. And the students, of course, they think about how we create the space together, all the equipment that is needed for that, and how we create this experience. I set up an uh, Adobe Express page just to sort of show some of the great works that we've the students have produced in the last years. And it's really amazing to see the different creative approaches. Like I said before, 
there's a very different framing. So we think about how does the storytelling really work. And there's some very diverse approaches, so some very smart ideas. Um, for instance, one project, the students took a perspective of a child. So they put the camera under the table, and you can then see the conversation of the adults. And so if you can see the little puppet, which means you're in that child's perspective. Of course, you can integrate very creative approaches, aesthetic treatments. When you do things in Premiere, you can bring in Photoshop layers. You can bring the 360 videos to After Effects or do certain treatments of these things. So we had like one project with a really great visual experience, all driven by the colors. Or some students, they built like a mini set around the 360 camera with lots of um, black cloth, so to say, and then just used particular lighting and then had some sort of hands. So it was very performative. And so it created like a very surreal experience. So just like really fantastic ideas that give students some opportunities to explore how can we work with this. And just the last minute, I just want to give you a creative pitch that if you think you want to give it a go, it's actually not that difficult. If you've got a 360 video camera, there's two options for you. Either it's monoscopic or it is a 360 3D, which is then what most cameras would call over under. And once you get the footage from your 360 camera, most of the times you just need to pop it into um, some kind of a stitcher, and then you can bring it straight away to Premiere. Premiere recognizes, of course, that it's um, a 360 video, so it's called equirectangular. That's a funky word for the session for me. So, like, you know, when you think about the world into a sphere, it's equirectangular, or you can just right click in Premiere and say that it is enable VR, and there you get your sphere. Premiere is also very good because it has like some very particular effects that are made for 360 videos. So it's very much, you can see here, editing like you would be editing with a normal video. But of course, you think about the 360 experience. And then when you export the project, there is also um, the options in the presets. And it does see all the metadata. So when you upload it to YouTube or Vimeo, everything is ready there for you to go. Um, YouTube is great because it's free, because these files can be, get very big. Um, Vimeo, of course, is also nice too, but sometimes you have to pay for it. So if you go over these, um, you know, 500 megabytes that you get, I think. Um, sometimes on YouTube, it takes a little bit longer. So just give it some time when it's processing. Um, one of the things that we'll be doing this um, semester is we're also working with a plugin for Audition that can do spatial audio ambisonics. So that's really great. Of course, one of the things that we learned in the pandemic, we can also make 360 videos with all 360 cameras, just in terms of using 2D uh, pictures or videos. If you want to sort of you know, just ex explore this, there are some resources on the Adobe Education Exchange. So if you just um, find me, you will find it there. Um, yeah, on, well, thanks, thanks for sharing some um, of the work that I could be doing and also work with the students who are looking forward you know, to um, do more work this semester. So many creative opportunities there to be even more creative with video going outside of the 2D realm into the 3D realm into virtual reality. Wonderful, Max. We really appreciate your inspiration. Looking forward to your contributions at the summit later this year too. Thanks again, Max. Cheers. Clara here from the Adobe Education team. I lead our global educator community programs and thank you for watching Inject Creativity Live. If you haven't already, be sure to check out the Adobe Creative Educator program, which you can check out below at adobe.ly slash ace. Thanks, Clara. We currently have over 1,700 ANZ teachers who have enrolled in at least level one of the Adobe Creative Educator course and about 54,000 globally. If you'd like to be guided through level one, we are running a be a creative educator course on almost a monthly basis. So look up adobe.ly forward slash creative educator for more information and share this site with your colleagues and wider education networks. The next opportunity is Tuesday, the 16th of August at 4 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. Of course, if you look up adobe.ly slash ACE, you can do the Creativity for All course on the Adobe Education Exchange at any time on demand to get your ACE Level 1 badge. The Creativity for All course is one of the many great on-demand courses on the Adobe Education Exchange. Earlier in this episode, we highlighted the 30-minute lightning learning courses. Other popular courses at the moment include goal setting with Adobe Express, Student presentations with Adobe Express. Infographics with Adobe Express. 
certifying Adobe skills in your classroom, Adobe Analytics for teaching and learning, and digital painting and drawing in the classroom, and lots more. Hello, welcome from Adobe's global education team, and thanks for watching Inject Creativity Live. If you're looking for more inspiration, learning, or resources, come join us at the Adobe Education Exchange at edx.adobe.com. The next Adobe TeachMeets opportunity is happening on July 26 and 28. As you can see on this slide, we have lots of great opportunities to spend quality time with an Adobe expert to learn a particular app and how it works in the classroom. So here's a video by Tim to explain more about this unique professional learning opportunity. Hi folks, we have another set of amazing Adobe Teach Meets coming up soon. Each session offers at least five workshop opportunities with either Adobe's low lift tools like CC Express or the more professional tools for experienced users. The workshops are run by Adobe experts and classroom teachers who know what works in any curriculum area to engage students in the classroom. Look up adobe.ly slash teachmeets and register your interest. And please do share this link with your colleagues and wider education networks. You're watching Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raithke. Just noticed, Erin, that we should have updated the date on that last video and had the last lot of teach me. So ignore those. Ah. Take note that July 26 and 28, which is next week, if you're watching this live, <laughs> if you're watching the recording, well, it may have already happened. Anyway, now, if you're on Facebook and you're not already a member of the Australasian Adobe Education Community Facebook group, please join via facebook.com slash groups slash A-U-S-A-E-L. Join us and keep regularly involved with the Adobe in education and the wider community. We have a monthly newsletter called Adobe in Education Update Australasia. Complete the contact form via adobe.ly forward slash contact dash edu dash APAC if you don't already get this publication each month and join the email list. Do you like the new banner there, Erin? That, that's the new banner for the July edition, which is going to come out next week. So we had some design people work on that so that's going to be our new branding for the newsletter and just to let you know we we now have pretty close to 50,000 teachers who have subscribed but when it boils down to it and we actually see which ones are actually going to be filtered through and haven't bounced back and all that sort of thing it's actually 31,000 teachers who get this newsletter so it's still a huge amount for just huge this audience week. yeah yeah which is exciting now we've got some special music to play because there's a new feature in this system now which allows us to do that. So we're going to do that. We're going to play a song that you may have heard before. Do you recognise that piece of music there? It's <laughs> lovely, nice and clear. Nice. Let's bring Jerry and Max back up onto the screen as we do the farewell. There he is. There we go. So, Max, thank you for your contribution to this episode. And any last words of wisdom for the audience at all? Oh, oh, I think we're on YouTube you. next. Uh, <laughs> there, was, there was my one for the show. <laughs> um, <laughs> Real good make, one. Make, make some 360 films. Yep, absolutely. And what about your book? Get your book. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, thank you. <laughs> well done. Our next Inject Creativity Live event will feature an interview with social media expert and author, Dr. Karen Sutherland from the University of Assumption. So for those of you who have joined us live, stay on for the recording of that episode where she'll be presenting the topic, Teaching Personal Branding Starts With You, and then stay on for the fireside chat with both Max and Karen. Special thank you to Erin and Jerry for helping me put this show together, and thank you to those who are with us live. We have a handful who are with us live at the moment. The next opportunity live will be on Wednesday, the 3rd of August at 5 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time with special guest Adobe Education Leader Michelle Dennis and the amazing Kenneth Shinnebury, who is in a U.S. Adobe Education Leader based in Germany. See you at the next episode. Bye, everyone. See ya. I think we might have a little ending video here, too. We've, we've got this one. 
uh, for the part one ending. So here's Rob to give us a proper close. See you later. Bye, everyone. Thank you for watching this episode of Inject Creativity Live. If you are not watching this live, join us live next time. Use this QR code or link to find out about dates and topics. And use this QR code and link to find out about other Adobe in Education professional learning opportunities. On behalf of the Adobe in Education team, keep being creative. Creativity Live Show. My name is Rob the Robot from the Adobe Education Team. This is a free online show for primary, secondary and post-secondary educators interested in enhancing digital literacy, communication and creativity in the teaching and learning process. Here are your hosts, Dr. Tim Kitchen and Erin Raithke. Thanks, Rob. Welcome to Inject Creativity Live, a show based on creativity for all in education with a focus on Adobe tools and resources. Welcome, Erin. Hi, Tim, and welcome to everyone who's joined us live and those watching on demand via the Adobe for Education YouTube channel or the Australasian Adobe for Education Facebook group. For this, the 71st episode of Inject Creativity Live being recorded in July 2022. For those of you who are with us live, we do encourage you to say hi, share where you are from, and add comments throughout the show in the chat. So let's start this episode with an acknowledgement of country. We respect and honour all Indigenous people from the lands we reach out to during this event. We acknowledge their stories, traditions and living cultures. We acknowledge them as the first educators and the first creatives, and we commit to building a brighter future together. I'm coming to you from Wurundjeri land in the Kulin Nation, otherwise known as Melbourne, Victoria, Australia. And I'm coming to you from the country of the Jagara, Yagara and Agurapul people from the area otherwise known uh, from, as Brisbane, Queensland, Australia. Let's welcome our techie whiz and Adobe Senior Customer Success Manager, Jerry Wong, to the stage. Hi, Jerry. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm coming to you from the home of the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, otherwise known as Sydney, New South Wales. During this episode, we will be hearing from Dr. Karen Sutherland from the University of Sunshine Coast. Tim's going to demo another Adobe Express quick action. We'll be promoting both the International Adobe Education Summit in July and the APAC Adobe Education Summit in September. We'll also be sharing a number of Adobe related education resources and professional learning opportunities and um, for you to take back to your schools, universities and other places of learning. We do hope you enjoy this episode. And if you do, please share it with your wider ed co your colleagues and wider education networks via the Adobe for Education YouTube channel. You're watching Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raithke. Let's meet our special guest for this episode and welcome back to the show, Adobe Education Leader, Dr. Karen Sutherland. Round of applause for Karen. How are you going, Karen? Well, thank you. How are you? Very well. It's good to have you with on the show again. So, Karen, it is great to have you back. So please tell us all about the work that you do at the University of the Sunshine Coast. Well, I'm lucky enough to uh, deliver all the social media courses there. So we have a major and a minor in social media. And a lot of that actually involves our students working directly with our local business communities to uh, create strategies and develop content. And we use Adobe tools, of course, um, to help us to do that. So, yeah, so it's, it's a really great job where we, I get to actually connect theory with practice and uh, connect the university to our local business community. Right, Karen. Tell us about your award-winning book, Strategic Social Media Management, Theory and Practice. Well, it's, um, it, it was actually very fun to write. And, uh, and what it is, it's, a, it's, a, it's got three parts and it takes people through in a, in a really quite, uh, in using layman's terms, through how to research and develop a strategy, 
uh, how do you find really great content and accurate content to share as well and how to create content. The final part's all about that. So there's quite a few Adobe references in that final part. So by the end of it, you you have a really uh, comprehensive guide on, on how to uh, create strategic content for social media. And how would we find the book, Karen? What's the best Well, one? actually, in my presentation, I do have a link, but uh, there it's through Palgrave Macmillan, but there is there is a link. It's um, Dr. Karen Sutherland forward slash strategic social media management is um is the the uh, website or you can just google you, you'll find it and if you look up dr karen sutherland you'll notice her her website which is pretty amazing and a great resource as well so karen tell us what will you be sharing in this episode well today, well, today i'm going to actually be talking about personal branding and it's quite a um, abstract concept but i'm going to give some really actionable advice on how educators can teach their students about personal branding by actually um, doing it themselves and demonstrating through their experience. Leading by example, makes sense. Well, thanks, Karen. We're looking forward to hearing from you very soon. Now it's time for a quick Inject Creativity Live Adobe Express tip. Now, before we jump into the Adobe Express tip, I wanna share something that I was able to do on Saturday last week. Uh, for the last three years, I've been working with this group called Pacific Links, which works with students in Vietnam who are at risk of trafficking. So mm. it's quite an interesting exercise where we're giving them opportunities to learn new skills. So the aim of this particular session was to teach them how to use Adobe Express to create a poster about the things that they like doing and encouraging them to develop desktop publishing skills. And I was so impressed because some of them were using Android, the app, and some of them were using the browser version on their laptop. Some of them were just using their phone. And we had to have a translator because not many of them spoke any English. So between all of those obstacles with the different devices and the different platforms and the different languages, I was so impressed with what they produced. And it's always a great opportunity to work with these students and this organization called Pacific Links. So let me just jump straight back into Adobe Express here. And one of the quick actions I want to highlight is the new Generate QR code. Now, Erin, have you used this one before? I did have a play with it the other day because um, it's available in the quick actions, but also when you're creating a graphic itself. So yeah, I had a bit of a, a looky-loo, but I'd love for you to share more. So what you need to do, like I'm going to grab the URL of this particular article that I put in my blog, and I'm going to copy that, come back to here and just paste it into this section here and then click create QR code. And instantly we now have a QR code. In fact, let me do a little test here just to make sure this is working. I'm going to grab my camera. I'm going to hover over that QR code and it's going to click what it does. And let's see if we can see that. Is it? There we go. So it's coming up with that article straight away on yep. my phone. So you can see it works really well and it has these lovely co color options and style yep. options if you wanted to rework your QR code. What do you reckon them? Pretty cool? Okay. I think it's fantastic. I especially like the color option because, you know, if you're really wanting to up the contrast on what you're doing um, or you've got a particular color theme in mind that you want to incorporate a QR code into, it's a nice bit of shorthand for adding a little bit of your own flavor to that yeah. feature. Of course, you've got the option of changing it into a particular file format that you'd like. And as soon as you click download, then that QR code image appears in your downloads folder, ready for you to continue working with. That's a pretty cool tip, isn't it? It is. <laughs> All right. We're going to hear from Clara now, who's going to give us a bit of a promo because she's going to be contributing to our APAC Summit in September. Clara here from the Adobe Education team. I lead our global education community programs, and I'm excited to see you at the APAC Adobe Education Summit. Well, the summit is happening on the 28th of September, a school holiday period for most of you in Australia. And um, Tim explains more in this clip. Let's see if Tim can find the right clip. Here we go. <laughs> Hi, folks. The 2022 APAC Adobe Education Summit is being held on Wednesday, the 28th of September, which is a school holiday period for most of you. 
Dr. Tim Patston, Australia's leading researcher and consultant in the field of creativity and innovation in education, will be our special guest. And you'll also be hearing from the global Adobe Education team, as well as Adobe Education leaders who will be sharing their classroom success stories, creative catalyst talks, as well as providing a range of practical workshops to help you make the most of your access to Adobe tools, especially the free Adobe Creative Cloud Express set of tools and resources. Register via adobe.ly slash apac-edu-summit22 or scan this QR code. We are looking forward to sharing with you and your colleagues at the 2022 APAC Adobe Education Summit. Now, before you come to the summit this year, I'm going to encourage those of you who are living in Australia to go to SBS On Demand and look up the show, Finding Creativity. So one of the main stars of this amazing documentary on creativity is our keynote speaker for the summit, Dr. Tim Patston, who, as our Tim mentioned in the clip we have just seen, is Australia's leading researcher in the area of creativity and innovation. As educators, it's so important for us to keep learning about the importance of creativity and how we should foster it in all curriculum areas. Finding Creativity is a beautifully produced documentary on creativity and is well worth watching. Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Tim Patston and I'm really looking forward to seeing you at the APAC Adobe Education Summit. We hope you're enjoying we hope you're enjoying this episode of Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raifke. Some of my buttons are a little bit sticky for this episode, but it's okay. We're getting through this. The EduTech Australia Conference is back to a face-to-face -face event on August 10 and 11, but this time it's not in Brisbane. It's not in Sydney where it's been in the past. It's in the, my home city of Melbourne. Being held at the Melbourne Convention Centre, over 10,000 educators and IT support people will be at what is the largest trade show and conference for the entire education life cycle across Australia. Adobe is a gold sponsor this year. We'll be presenting a plenary session as well as a workshop with the support of Victorian Adobe education leaders, Michelle Dennis and Stephen Colbert. If you are going to EduTech in Melbourne, do register for the two Adobe sessions and visit the Adobe team at the Adobe Education Leaders at the Adobe booth at the Expo. And you know what? We're going to be doing at least 20 demos at that Adobe booth, so it's going to be well worth your time. You're watching Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raithke. We recently launched a new resource that maps Adobe Education Exchange teaching resources to the Australian curriculum called School Projects and Lesson Ideas with Adobe. Look up adobe.ly forward slash ac dash projects to make the most of this new resource and share it with your colleagues. Let's hear from Tacey. Hi, I'm Tacey Trowbridge, head of Adobe's thought leadership and advocacy. Thanks for watching Inject Creativity Live. And if you're excited about creativity, take a listen to the Creative Educator Podcast. You may have noticed a number of new lightning learning courses and other resources that are now featured on the Adobe for Education YouTube channel and the Adobe Education Exchange. One of these courses is titled Graphic Organizers with Adobe Express. Here is K-12 contact lead Max Schuenting from the US to share more. Have you ever struggled to find a new and creative way to teach a complex topic? Graphic organizers have been shown to help students with diverse learning needs succeed in any class. In their simplest and purest forms, graphic organizers are visual teaching tools that present complex information in a simple way, show the relationship between ideas and concepts, and support deeper learning and continued engagement. What I love most about graphic organizers is that when students create their own, the format they choose and the creativity they express encourages them to interact with their own learning in unique, visual, and creative ways. All right, let's get started. We hope you're enjoying this episode of Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raifke. 
Well, let's welcome Dr. Karen Sutherland to the stage for her presentation. Over to you, Karen. Thank you. And I forgot to say, too, that I'm coming to you from uh, the Cubby Cubby Gubby Gubby country uh, of the Sunshine Coast. So uh, let me just bring up. We'll bring up um, your share screen. And yeah. We'll center yourself a bit there, Karen, if you can, so that we can. Sure. Mix um, is that better? Uh, a little it's bit more. To, I, Move to your I can't, left. I can't yeah. to my left. Sorry, yeah. I can't see myself. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Great. It's like a game of skill. So, <laughs> um, so thank you so much for having me back. Um, I wanted just to have a little chat this this time around um, this topic of personal branding, which I, I have a lot of educators and and even business owners and students come to me really because it is it can be quite an abstract uh, idea and concept. But I'm trying, going to try and demystify it a bit for you and show you some really great um, helpful tips on how to teach students through what you do with your own personal brand. So the reason behind why I think this is so important now is that so many of our students are online. Like they, they're, they're, they're online and they're getting younger and younger as well. And while um, employment for, you know, for, for primary school kids and, and earlier um, high, you know, secondary school students may not be a, a big, um, you know, important issue for them yet. They're still online, creating content, sharing and, and, and putting representations of themselves on online. And um, I think we, you know, and I see them now in a lot of curriculum around um, guiding students on, on how to do that in, in a really sort of po positive way. Uh, I think sometimes uh, it takes that education, particularly with social media, uh, to be there as, as, a, as a guide until um, students reach a maturity level where they understand the dangers and the risks associated with putting themselves online um, and what they're doing online as well and how that can be perceived by others. So, so there's some real research around that, this topic, particularly in the context of employment. And so this big statistic here uh, came from a study that was um, on the Robert Walters recruitment website. And uh, they found that 62% of um, employers are actually using social media sites to screen candidates as part of the um, the recruitment process. And I, anecdotally, I've I've spoken at HR conferences around this topic, and they're actually people in some large organisations, and that's their entire role. That's what they do. As soon as an application comes in, they are looking for that candidate online to see what their digital footprint is like and how they're representing themselves. And often that is the first stage of um, cutting them out of the race if, if what they find isn't very positive. And so it's a real issue that needs to be considered, I think, uh, from the age of when students are starting to, to post about themselves online and, and um, interact with other people's content as well. A study that I did uh, with uh, Professor Karen Freeberg from the University of Louisville also an Adobe education leader, um, was it, we interviewed or no, we surveyed about 400 um, Australian employers and we found in that study, it was around all sorts of things relating to um, sort of uh, unprofessional social media behaviours uh, but also social media skills that they look for. But one thing, key, um, key statistic that came out about that was that 85% of them are influenced by what they see and that can be in a positive way or it can be in a negative way. So the fact is, is, is that they're looking and they're, they're, they're changing their minds about whether to employ people based on what they're seeing. And that could be if they're seeing really positive things, it's, it's actually getting them to uh, employ that person. But if it's um, negative, you know, it, it, as I said, it might actually cut them out of the race. Um, but with this, when you're actually teaching this, what I find has been the most effective is by trying to, uh, as Erin said before, lead by example. And uh, this is not, I'm not lecturing you, it seems like it, but um, it's really because students need to see it to be it. And so when branding is, can be such an, as I said, such an abstract concept and sometimes they don't understand until they actually see the, um, say, someone with a, a a positive personal brand that they know actually demonstrating what that actually means. And um, I have some tips for you on, on how to do that. So 
as I mentioned, Professor Karen Friedberg, she knows a lot about personal branding. Her her brand is um, very, very strong. And she breaks it down what it is in into four components. And so it's around personality, consistency, passion and expertise. And so I think one of the big misconceptions when we, we're talking about branding is pretending to be something that you're not or representing yourself in a way that is is not who you are. And that's that's not it at all. It's actually about really finding your strengths and amplifying those uh, to help others online. And, and that's what branding is really about. And so I break these down just a, a little bit more. So the first really comes down to the, the components of a really strong personal brand. It means that you, uh, you understand who you are, uh, you understand the elements that make you you, and you're not afraid to actually um, share those about yourself. So examples um, could be, for example, I love uh, I love social media. That's and you'll see that on my social media. I'm always uh, sort of posting about that. But I also love uh, going and taking uh, photos of the beach at sunrise and. That's another part of me that I share as well. And so that's sort of a consistent part. And um, what else do I, I love? Uh, I love tea parties. <laughs> so, so a lot of my content, it's around these really, um, you know, particular things around my personality um, that I like to do. And I, I share those. So it's, a, it's not about putting yourself out there as some sort of, um, you know, sort of faceless, um, I guess, image it's about showing people who you are you know showing and not being afraid to show who you are either the next thing is about consistency so it this can mean lots of things so it can be around um how you behave online as well as in person so sometimes people find that they might interact with someone online in a particular way but when they meet them in person then it's not the same relationship so it's about making sure that you you're consistent the other thing can be is about having something um, that's consistent around your your look so for me i red is my favorite color so i, I generally when i'm um you know, not every day that I'm out, but when I'm sort of doing something where I'm speaking or I'm um, doing something on social media, I tend to wear something that's red and um, and people associate that with me. So, Tim, um, you are always immaculately dressed every time I see you on, in your, your content online um, and you're consistently dressed in that way. Um, you know, Karen Freeberg, her thing is coffee. So she's constantly talking, you know, about, about coffee. That's her thing. So it's about being consistent each time. The other thing is also about your personality and your demeanor. So it's about how you treat people um, online, um, being helpful, thinking about what it is about you that makes you you and, and just being consistent within your um, delivery of that. The next is about passion. And so it's about really working out the things that really drive you and then creating content and talking about those things and showing your, your students that it's actually safe to do that, to share and, and be able to express their passion for their areas of interest. And that's really something that makes them them. And that's a huge part of branding. And for people who have really strong brands, the, you can see exactly what they're passionate about. And, and it makes people really, um, it's, it's quite... Um, contagious but it's also quite attractive like people will gravitate to someone who shows passion and through um, adobe i've met so many people who are so passionate about education and that's what makes me keep wanting to watch them and to learn from them as well and finally the fourth component is around expertise now it's showing your students that everyone is an expert at something so there is always some area of interest that people know a lot about. And by doing that, showing it and trying to get to help them and guide them to work that out, it's about then modeling how you actually bring that out. So a great way to do this is on using social media and creating helpful content around for people who are also interested in that area or people who want to know more. Um, and using tools like Adobe Express to create that content is so easy and um, creating videos and things like that that you can share on social media 
that are, are helpful and of interest to people. The other thing is um, participating in online communities like, like the ones that Adobe has can also help to strengthen your brand and showing um, your students there's just the benefits of being an active participant in a community as well and how that strengthens brand. So um, these are my sort of four, four tips on, on how to do that. Uh, when, when I finish, I just wanted to show more. This is more information about my book. If you want to connect more with me and um, to learn more about sort of social media or, or how to develop your brand, if you have questions around that and how you can weave that into your classes as well, please get in contact. I'm happy to help you with that. So I think I'll just... Um, Karen, that's wonderful. Thank you. And thank you for, for promoting the book. I was going to ask you about that. Do you have a copy of your book handy? To, I do. To I do. Oh, ah, there, oh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's, um, it's quite comprehensive. Um, and, yes, uh, but there'll be another, a new edition coming out, I think, in, in to next year, I think, because it changes all the time. So nice, there you go. Yeah such an emerging area and so important for schools and universities to take it really seriously, even as Absolutely. you said, at the primary school level. So really appreciate uh, your time, Karen, and thank you so much for being involved in the show. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Tanya Averitt from the Global Education Team here at Adobe for Education. I'm so excited that you are watching Inject Creativity Live. Please check us out with the Adobe Creative Educator Program and be on the lookout for all the amazing challenges that we have every month. See you soon. Thanks, Tanya. We currently have over 1,700 ANZ teachers who have enrolled in at least level one of the Adobe Creative Educator course and about 54,000 globally. If you'd like to be guided through level one, Tim and I are running the Be a Creative Educator course on almost a monthly basis. Look up adobe.ly forward slash creative educator for more information and share this site with your colleagues and wider education networks. The next opportunity is on Tuesday, the 16th of August at 4 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. Of course, if you look up adobe.ly slash ACE, you can do the Creativity for All course on the Adobe Education Exchange at any time on demand to get your ACE Level 1 badge. The Creativity for All course is one of the many great on-demand courses on the Adobe Education Exchange. Earlier in this episode, we highlighted the 30-minute lightning learning courses. Other popular courses at the moment include goal setting with Adobe Express. Student presentations with Adobe Express. Infographics with Adobe Express. Certifying Adobe skills in your classroom. Adobe Analytics for teaching and learning. Digital painting and drawing in the classroom. And that's just to name a few. Hi there, it's Claudio from the Adobe Global EDU team. Thanks for watching Inject Creativity Live. If you haven't already, join the Adobe Creative Educator Program. Now we've got Adobe Teach Meets happening. I mean, look, it may have just happened after you watch this episode mm -hmm. or it might be just about to happen, but look up the site for the next opportunity to enjoy an Adobe Teach Meet session. As you can see, just on this slide, there's lots of great opportunities to spend quality time with an Adobe expert to learn a particular app and how it can be used in the classroom. So check out adobe.ly forward slash teach meets to find out more, register and share this unique professional learning opportunity with your colleagues. You're watching Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raithke. If you're on Facebook and you're not already a member of the Australasian Adobe Education Community Facebook group, please join via facebook.com slash groups slash A-U-S-A-E-L. Join us and keep regularly involved with Adobe in Education and the wider community. We have a monthly newsletter called Adobe in Education Update Australasia. So if you complete the contact form at adobe.ly forward slash contact dash edu dash APAC, if you don't already get this publication each month and join the email list. I think it's time for that theme song again. Let's have a little listen as it comes back on. And we're going to bring Jerry and Karen back up to the screen for the farewell of this episode. Karen, thank you so much for your contribution. And do you have any last words of wisdom for the audience? 
Yeah, I, I guess don't don't be scared to think about your brand um, and show you. It's all about you. Well done. And of course, get her book as well. Mm. Oh, yeah, here we go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Our next NJ Creativity Live event, episode 72, will feature the amazing Michelle Dennis. And episode 73 will feature a fabulous Adobe Illustrator demo from the amazing Kenneth Shinabri, who is the US Adobe Education Leader based in Germany. We have an image of him, Jerry, on the slide. Is, it, is that on the next slide there? See him in it? There, there he, he is. is. There he is. We'll be recording this episode and more on the 3rd of August at 5 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time via the Adobe for Education YouTube channel. Join us live if you can. And for those watching live, get ready to move to adobe.ly forward slash edu dash meet dash APAC for our brief fireside chat. A special thank you to Erin and Jerry for helping to put this show together. And of course, very special thank you to Erin, uh, for Karen Sutherland, who was joining us. You did a fantastic job with a great episode. And here is Rob the Robot. Rob the Robot. There we go to sign off this episode. See you later, everyone. Bye Thanks. for now. Thank you for watching this episode of Inject Creativity Live. For those who are watching live, join us now via adobe.ly slash edu dash meet dash APAC for an informal, non-recorded fireside chat to meet and interact with our presenters and other audience members. During this informal chat, you'll be able to complete the feedback form and apply for a professional development certificate. If you are not watching this live, join us live next time. Use this QR code or link to find out about dates and topics and use this QR code and link to find out about other Adobe in Education professional learning opportunities. On behalf of the Adobe in Education team, keep being creative.